I'm Carl Rowland with Shoreline Products. In this video, we're going to show you how to create a home position, find your home position for your part, touch off a tool, and run a simple program. Okay, so uh, it's in manual. I turned it on. I zeroed everything out. All my numbers are green now. We don't have limit switches on this machine. So what I do is I go into manual and jog and increment. And I'm close to the end of travel in my Z axis. So I've got it on 10 thousandths per click. I'm gonna click on my Z and I'm gonna go up. Let me get this up higher until the stepper motor stalls. Right there, it just stalled. So on this machine, one full revolution is 50 thousandths. So from the end of travel, I'm gonna bring it down 50 thousandths, so Z minus. Okay, and you've got numbers on, your, on each of these dials and a mark, or in this case, it's got a line for the DRO. And you write down what the number is for your Z axis on a piece of paper. Now I'm going to zero out my Z and that's where all of my tool offsets are going to be referenced from. That's my machine zero. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is uh, just a quarter inch pin so we can just show I'm not going to cut anything. I'm going to put, this is going to be tool number one and I'm going to put tool number one on the spindle, thread it on all the way. For touching off, this does not have to be tight, just snug. If we put a piece of three inch square stock up here, this would be held in your mill vise or clamped to your table, or however you want to hold your material. And what I'm going to do now is go to continuous and I'm going to jog the Z down. I'm zeroed out, so the, the number that shows when my tip of my tool touches the top of the part, which is going to be my part zero, my Z zero for my part, is the number that I'm going to put in for that tool. So I'm just going to jog down until I get close. I'm pretty close right there. Uh, I usually use a piece of 1000 shim stock for this. This is one of our business cards and it measures 15 thousandths thick. And okay, what I'm going to do is put that under the tool you know, on top of the part. Now I'm going to switch to increment. I'm going to pick an increment of one thousandths per click. And I'm going to move my business card till it grabs. Right there it grabbed. So I'm at 3.395. We'll forget about the tenths, okay? So if I add 15 on to that, it would be minus 3.410. Oh. So right now I'm gonna go over to the tools. And right here for tool number one, I already put in quarter inch. Uh, let's get rid of that, quarter inch. Okay, I'm going to put in minus 3.410. Okay, and now I have to hit enter. If I don't hit enter and I just get off this page, it hasn't taken that information. So that's my offset distance from machine zero to the top of the part for that tool. And now if I go into, I'll turn this off. If I go into MDI and I tell it G90, G00, Z0, it's going to go back to the machine zero point. The way you incorporate the length compensation from your tooling page, okay, you have to use the code. We'll go to MDI again. You have to use the code G43 and then the H and the number of the tool. Okay, so I'm just going to punch in G43, H1. 
And when I hit the enter button, nothing happened. Okay, it, it just put that number into my Z value actually. Now, if I want it to go, if I want this tool now to go to a hundred thousands above the top of my stock, I would go G00 Z point one and it should stop a hundred thousands from the top of the part. That's a hundred thousands right there. I go Z zero, whoop, hold on. 0, 0.0, I'm on the top of my part right now. So that's incorporating the length compensation for that tool. With MDI or at the end of that tool process in your program, the way to cancel it out is to punch in G49 Z0. And now that sends it back to my machine home and just moved it up the amount that was in the tool offset page. So this tool is set right now. If I go to cut the part, it knows that this surface right here is part zero for the Z. For my X, for my X and Y axis, I've got an edge finder right here. And what I would do is put my edge finder in, thread it on. For an edge finder, you want to be spinning about 2000 RPM, which is just shy of the max RPM of our machine, which is 2800. So I'm going to turn on the spindle. and that's 2000 RPM. So right now what I'm gonna do is go back to the manual page and what I'm gonna do for my program, my X and Y zero are dead center of this part. So this is three inches by three inches. I'm just gonna to touch off on the side and shift in an inch and a half, touch off on the back and shift in an inch and a half, and then I'll zero both my X and Y at that point right there. So in jog, I'm going to go to continuous. I'm going to pick my X axis. I'm going to jog X plus to move to the side of the part. I'm going to go Z axis and I'm going to bring it down. Oh, a little bit too much. Okay, right now the tip of my edge finder is down below the top surface of the part. I want to make this walk out a little bit more. Now I'm going to move in until it goes straight. And then I'm going to go at a thou per touch until it kicks back out again. And that will be the edge of the edge finder at the edge of the part. So I'm going to go to incremental. I'm going to go back to X axis. Uh, I'm going to go 100 thousandths per click, X minus. I'm going to go to 10 thousandths per click. And as I get closer, it starts to run truer. So I'm pretty close now. I'm going to go to 1 thousandths per click. Okay, right there it went straight and it just kicked out. So that means the edge of my edge finder is now on the edge of the part. I'm going to go to Z axis, continuous. I'm going to move the Z up. And I'm going to turn off my spindle. So the tip of my edge finder is 200 thousandths diameter. So to get the center line of my spindle on the edge of the part, I'm just going to go over here to, to X again. And I'm going to go incremental. And I would shift it over 100 thousandths. So I'm just going to go X minus. So right now the center line of my spindle is on the edge of the part. So my part center line is now 1.5 from the edge of that part. So I can either go to inch increments and click over an inch and then 500 thousandths. Or the other way I can do it is I can go to MDI and I just moved an inch. So I only have 500 thousandths more to go. There's two ways to move it. G90, which is related to the actual position on your position page, or G91, which is related to the actual position of the tool at this point.
So if I just want to move over 500 thousandths more, I would use G91, which is incremental. And I would just punch in G91, G00 for rapid move, X minus 0.5. And it just goes 500 thousandths. That is where my part center line is. So I would go back to manual, click on X, and I would just click X0. So that zeroes out my X axis where I want my part zero to be in the X. So now I'll do the same thing in the Y. I'm gonna click on Y, continuous, Y plus, till I'm past the part. Okay, Z, bring it down again. So now the tip of my edge finder is below the top of the part. I'm gonna turn my spindle on again. I'm gonna make it walk out a little bit more. I'm gonna go back to Y axis. I'm gonna go incremental, and I'm just gonna go with 10 thousandths per click. And go Y minus. So now I'm touching each click, it runs a little truer. It's pretty true right there. I'm going to go to one thousandths. Click, click. Right there is pretty dead true. I'm going to click until it kicks out again. Right there is my kick out. So right now, the edge of the edge finder is at the edge of the part. I'm going to turn my spindle off. I'm going to go to Z axis. Continuous, C plus, get it above the part. Now I'm going to go back to Y, incremental, and 100 thousandths per click, Y minus. So right there, the center line of my spindle is now on the edge of the part in the Y axis. And right now I'm just going to go to one, one inch, Y minus. And then hundred thousands. One, two, three, four, five. So that's my Y zero. So I'm on Y, I'm just gonna click Y zero. So now my X and Y are both zeroed out at the center line of the part. So what I would do now is look on my dials for both my X and Y and write down the actual number for X and Y for where my hand wheels are. That way if you power off the machine, uh, and you're not at home, you can easily jog, eyeball it to that point right there and then find adjust with your jog one way or the other to get it to line up with the numbers on your dial to get you back to your home position. So right now our X, Y, and Z are set. So what I'm gonna do right now, is I'm gonna go to manual, Z axis, I'm gonna just jog it up, take my edge finder off, And I'm going to put tool number one, which is our quarter inch pin, back on here. All right. I'm not cutting anything, so I'm not going to lock it down tight. Okay, so uh, very important. Okay, you have length compensation. Let's go to the tool page. On the tool, it has diameter set here, and I didn't put anything in there. If I was using cutter compensation, then I would actually put the diameter of my cutter. So we'll say this is a quarter inch end mill. I would actually put in 0 0.250, enter. And if I was using cutter compensation, let's say I was uh, profiling the outside of this three inch square, and when I got done with it, it was 10 thousandths oversize, I would subtract 5 thousandths from that diameter number and just rerun that part of the program and it would step in that 5 thousandths and cut 5 thousandths more off on each side. So in your program or an MDI, if I put a G43 in there and the H1, it takes the value right here, 3.410 and puts it into the computer I have cutter compensation, it's taking that diameter value and it's in there. 
so if you stop a program in the middle of a program for any reason, you have to cancel the length compensation, the cutter compensation. And the other one is if you have a, a pecking cycle, G81, G82 for drilling, you have to cancel the pecking cycle also, or the computer retains that information. So anytime you have to stop a program, say your cutter breaks or whatever, and you have to stop a program, or you're in MDI and you've incorporated length compensation, you have to get rid of all of those. So in MDI and in your program, okay, what you want to do is punch in G90, G00, then to cancel your length compensation, G49 cancels length compensation, uh, G40 cancels cutter compensation, and G80 cancels any of your can cycles. And then I would put in X0.0, Y0.0, Z0.0. When I move this now, going to go to zero. It's already at zero in the X and Y. It'll move to X, Y, and Z zero. And it's now canceled any compensation whatsoever. So now any move that I make is going to be related to my actual position without any compensation values added on to it. Okay. So right now I've got this cutter in here. I'm going to go to auto. I'm going to go to my editor and I'm gonna call up a program. I'm gonna to go to open. And this one, it's in my test folder. And this program, all it does is cut a one inch square, a, a square, a triangle, and a circle. So I'm gonna open this up. And you can see in this program, right here, this line right here, G43, G0, G00, H1, that's incorporating the length compensation for that tool. And then at the very bottom here is G49, Z0, which cancels out that length compensation. In the program, it's going to be cutting a quarter inch deep into this part, okay? So I don't want to cut this part. I just want to show the end mill going through the program above it. So what I'm going to do is go to my tool data page. And for my length, I'm going to subtract 300 from this. So it'll be 50 thousandths above the top of the part when it's doing all this. So I'm just gonna change my 0.4 to 0.1. So now when it comes down 250 below the top of the surface, it will actually just be 50 thousandths above. And again, I have to hit enter. So I'm gonna turn off my tooling page. Uh, turn my editor back on. So right now that's the program right there to load the program into the machine. I go to file and I go to save and load. And you'll see the program show up at the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do right now, you have several options here. If I go, if I click on run, it's just gonna run the program. If I click on step, each time I click on step, it's gonna go one block at a time in the program and step through the program. So the best way to, to start your program is to use the step mode, and that way you can just click one block at a time and you have time to uh, panic or whatever. Your e-stop is up here. If you click on e-stop, it'll stop all your axis from moving. It will not stop the spindle from turning, however, okay? Um, another one in the program, anything that's in your program that's inside parentheses like this will show up as a message to you. Right? The computer does not read those, it's just message information. So this one up here says tool number, tool one end mill roughing diameter 0.25. And then further down here, there'll be another one that says, you know, if you, You've got different cutters and you want to have, you know, say, so the first cutter is going to be at 2000 RPMs. The next cutter you put in is going to be at 1500. In your program, you can put parentheses S2000 or S1500, and it will show up here as a message to you that you've got to change your RPM range. So right now, I should be ready to go with this and I'm just going to start clicking on step. 
and you can see it says spindle speed 1191. That was one of the things that was in parentheses. And it's stepping through. Okay, it's gonna bring it down to Z0, which is now, or actually, it's gonna bring it down to Z.1, so it's gonna be 400 thousandths above. All right, now, the other one you can do is back plot. If I click on back plot, it actually shows my cutter path right here. So in back plot, you've got X, Y, and Z over here. You can adjust these so that you're either looking from the side or straight down. Okay, and I prefer to look straight down. So if I move this, minus 32, Ninety-five. I get close. M I Z. Fifty-three. And then hit refresh. It's going to change the view. And I can use my oh, sidebars here. Let me find it again. I can move my sidebars and I can also increase my zoom and then hit refresh again and that's my part and you can see the cutter path right now as it's moving through. So right now it's cutting the, the sides and now it's going to do the tri triangle shape. feeding out to the side and it will generate the circle. So I've got a square, an X, a triangle, and a circle in this program. I can also override my feed rate with this bar right here. Slow it down. Uh, one thing that I uh, suggest is when you're programming the highest I can go on my feed rate override is 120%. So if you put your feed rates in at double the feed rate, say it was supposed to be four inches a minute, if you put them all at double the feed rate and then just bring this guy down to 50%, and in order to go increments, you just click off to the side of this and it increments down one at a time. So start your feed rate override at 50%, and then if you can cut faster, you can exceed the 20% that this will allow you just by increasing your override here. So if you double all your feed rates and you start at 50%, for every uh, five that you're over on this, it's a 10% increase on your feed rate or decrease, whichever way you're gonna go. At the end of the program, there's an M2. If I want to run this program again, I just hit run and it starts going. Um, the other one you have is pause. So let's put this guy up at 100%. So I can click pause. If there's nothing drastically wrong, that's better than hitting the E stop up here. Okay, so pause, and then I just click resume, and it continues on. All right, so that pretty much covers everything on the control. Uh, as far as the programs go, I'm gonna, well, actually, let's say my end mill just broke right now. And I'm gonna go pause to reset the program. What I have to do is go into the editor and go to file and then save and load. And it'll ask you if you want to interrupt your program and you just say okay. 
Right now that reset my program if anything went wrong. You'll also notice up here the first line of code is G17, G20, G40, G49, G80, G90, G00, G94, X, Y, and Z0. So for each tool, if you put that block of code in before each tool, when it starts on that tool, it will automatically cancel out all your compensations also. So that's just a programming tip. Okay. Uh, one more. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go into MDI. I'm going to punch in G90, G00, G40, G49, X0.0, Y0.0, Z0.0. Oh, I've got a bad character. Okay, so normally when it says I've got a bad character, uh, which I do, I've got a minus here. So if you type in anything wrong, it'll let you know about it. G90, G00, G40, G49, X0, Y0, Z0. That'll move my Z to the machine home position and my X and Y to zero, and I just cancel out everything there. So now if I go into my program, go file, save and load, it's reloaded it, and I'm ready to run again. So that's the basics for our Linux control system. Thank you.